Shalom all brothers and sisters. All honor and great glory goes to the Heavenly Father Yahuwah in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you to this series, House of Abraham, House of Isaac, House of Jacob, and the Twelve Sons, House of Yahusha, and House of Yahuwah. This will be a four-part series brothers and sisters and we're going to look at each household to get an understanding of the house of Yashara what is it what's all included in it and plus we're going to prove what I said in my update video my important update video <coughs> where I mentioned that um, the Gentiles were always a part of our households they was always a part of every covenant. They was always there. And we going to look at the scriptures and the scriptures alone is going to prove. Prove itself without any interpretation. So let's start right here in Matthew 15 and 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Yasharal. Now, what is this house? What is the house? We're going to take a look at that house. We know that Hamashiach came preaching and teaching to his own, to his people. But did that mean that he forsook all that was in the land? All who was tied to Yasharal? We're going to find out and let the scripts tell us the truth. So we're going to start this thing off in Genesis chapter 12. Now remember, we are focusing on looking at <clears throat> the household of Abraham and the Gentiles that was tied to it. And then we're going to get to Isaac's household and the Gentiles that was tied to it. And so on and so forth. You're going to see the other side of the narrative unfold. And you're going to know that, wait a minute, this is not the Roman Catholic or Christian church narrative. It's the most highs. They just took it and twisted it. And it's going to all fall in place. And you're going to know <clears throat> the truth. And the truth shall set you free. So let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Okay, right here in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. We're going to bear witness of Abram leaving his land with Sarah. Now, Yahweh had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse thee him that curse of thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed so Abraham departed as Yahweh had spoken unto him and Lot went with him and Abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran and Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan they came. So right away you see it's Lot, Sarai, going with Abraham. And the souls that they got in Haran. Right away. At, right when he left. In obedience to the father. There was Gentiles tied to Abram's house before he was even given the promises. Do y'all see it? Plain and simple. And of course, Abram passed through the land unto the place Sechem. And later on in this, you're going to see where Jacob and the 12 sons conquer Sechem and they get servants and handmaids out of there. 
So I'm just pre-preparing you for that. When, when we get to the house of Jacob and the 12 sons, you're going to see that as well. So let's continue to let this story unfold. Uh, let's drop down to 15 and 16. The prince is also a pharaoh. Okay. Uh, this is when Abram went into Egypt. And Sarah was seen. And she was beautiful. And they told Pharaoh about Sarah. And Sarah was taken for a wife to be for Pharaoh. And you're going to see here where Abraham got more servants and handmaids. Let's start at 15. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abraham well for her sake. And he had sheep and oxen and donkeys and men servants and maid servants and she donkeys and camels. Look at that. This is what Pharaoh gave him. He entreated Abraham well for her sake. This is what he gave him. Sheep, oxen, donkeys, men servants, maid servants, camels. And then, of course, the Most High plagued that household. <laughs> and uh, Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. Uh, once he found out that that was his wife, and he gave him back, gave him back his wife. And uh, Abraham prayed for Pharaoh, and the curses were broken. And we're going to read a little bit more about that in the book of Jasher to bear witness of this story. And of course, Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold. And in the souls of men, brothers and sisters, when he left, when he left out. Now, he went to Philistine as well and in the land of Philistine the Philistines um, told he, he ran into the same story with the king of Philistine and um, I didn't actually write that scripture down I was trying to find it here but the same thing happened over there and, and the uh, Abimelech the king of Philistine gave him handmaids and servants and and uh and souls of men as well. The same story. So Abraham begotten men servants and maid servants there as well. Let's go bear witness to the story with Pharaoh here in Jasher. And again, we're focusing on the household of Abraham and we're proving that, yes, he indeed had servants and handmaids uh, whenever the covenant was made with him. This is Jasher, chapter 15, verse 21. And the king approached Sarai and said unto her, What is that man to thee who brought thee hither? And she said, He is my brother. And the king said, It is incumbent upon us to make him great, to elevate him, and to do unto him all the good which thou shalt command us. And at that time the king sent to Abram, Abram silver, gold, precious stones in abundance, together with cattle, men servants, maid servants. This is what Pharaoh gave him, men servants and maid servants. And the king ordered Abram to be brought. And he set him down, set him in the court of the king's house. And the king greatly exalted Abram on that night. Now, of course, he found out. And the curses came upon him. And he gave Sarah back. Uh, let's look at 29 through 34. And in the morning, the king called 
For Abram and said to him, What is this that thou hast done to me? What didst thou say? Why did thou say she is my sister? Owing to which I took her unto, my, unto me for a wife. And this heavy plague has therefore come upon me in my household. Now therefore here is thy wife. Take her and go from our land, lest we all die on her account. And Pharaoh took more cattle. He's, he, he already entreated Abraham. Look, he he gave him more. More cattle, more uh, men servants and, and maid servants. And silver and gold to give to Abraham. And he returned unto him Sarah his wife. And the king took a maiden. Whom he begat by his concubines. And he gave her to Sarah for a handmaid. And the king said to his daughter, it is better for thee, my daughter, to be a handmaid in this man's house than to be mistress in my house after we have beheld the evil that befell us on account of this woman. So he took one of his daughters, man. He said, it's better for you to be in Abraham's household, a handmaid to Sarah, than to be in my household. And Abram arose. And he and all belonging to him went away from Egypt and Pharaoh and ordered some of his men to accompany him and all that went with him. And Abram returned to the land of Canaan to, place, to the place where he had made the altar, where he had first had pitched his, pitched his tent. So Abram's house was growing. The most I was blessing Abraham. And by him being blessed, these servants and handmaids and People were being blessed in his household be, uh, for being a part of it and taking a part of all that righteousness he was handing them over. And this is another story that needs to be told, brothers and sisters, about Abraham's servants and how they were empowered by the Most High, right along with Abraham. To defeat these kings who seized Lot when these kings came against Sodom and Gomorrah and took her everything. Right here says, and eunuch, Abram's servant who was in the battle, saw this and told Abram all that the kings had done to the city of Sodom and that Lot was taken captive by them. And Abram heard this, and he rose up with about 318 men that were with him. And he that night pursued these kings and smote them. And they all fell before Abram and his men and his men. There was no Isaac at this time. There wasn't even a, a Ishmael yet. I don't believe there was Ishmael just yet, all right? I'm going to think about that one again. Well, anyway, we know that this is Abraham's servants. And there was none remaining but the four kings who fled, and they went each his own road. And Abram recovered all the property of Sodom. And he also recovered Lot and his property, his wives and little ones and all belonged to him, so that Lot lacked nothing. It was Abraham and his men. Y'all see that? The Most High empowered Abraham and the servants to beat them. 300 men. Y'all want to know where the story of 300 may have came from? It may have came from right here, huh? <laughs> Abraham and the 300. Well, actually it's 318 but we know that um, there was another 300 chosen by the rivers of Jordan uh, where they said whoever they tested each man to see how they would drink of the water, whether they would lap it up or whether they use a hand or something like that. And uh, that's how that 300 was chosen to fight in the battle. But anyway, we're, we're proving that Abraham had servants who were Gentiles from the other nations 
And they also took part in the covenants of promise, brothers and sisters. And again, you see them being empowered right along with Abraham to win this battle. But let's go to Genesis 17. And we're going to show you what the Most High has done from the very start. He, he already was building Abraham's household ahead of time. So Abraham already had Gentiles all over the place. He had a great multitude of people in his household. This is Genesis 17 and 1. And when Abraham, I mean Abram, was 90 years old and 9, Yahweh appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty, Yah. Walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and Yah talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. He shall be a father. This is a promise to Abraham. You're going to be a father of many nations, Abraham. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of come out of thee. So he's making this promise to his seed, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve sons, and on down. You can't leave out those of the household because the father didn't. Let's go on. Let's read on. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a Elohim unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan. So he's a stranger in the land of Canaan. Just as he was a stranger in the land of Mizraim. Just as he was a stranger in the land of Philistines. For an everlasting position, I will be there, Elohim. So, what else did the Mosai say? And Yahweh said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee. In their generations, this is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. That's right. There was a covenant made first with Abraham, then to Isaac, then to Jacob, and then to the twelve sons. But you got to include the household. And this is where the Most High steps up and covers every excuse that you can use in a book because he didn't want no heathen or no Gentile living amongst us to have any excuse to say, well, 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 we can't be underneath the covenant because the covenant was is just for your, your, your seed, your 12 seed, your 12 tribe seed. Do y'all really want them to be walking around half naked, eating pork, wearing bikinis, taking each other's wives, having their own daughters, men being with men in our land and women being with women in our land because there's no covenant with them while they're in our households? They supposed to be under our headship. They supposed to be under our guidance and protection. We supposed to look out for all of our household. So the Most High in his brilliance included them in a covenant. Here we go. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it, is, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house are brought with money 
bought with money of a stranger, which is not thy seed. Is this not plain? I don't, I don't have to break this down. There's no interpret, no need of any interpretation of this right here. Because the father already started building Abraham's household from Haran with other nations. He went to, to uh, Pharaoh's land and got strangers for his household. He went to the Philistines and got more strangers from that household. Y'all, y'all see this? Now Abraham's 99 with a great household. And he's including the stranger that's in him, amongst him who is not of his seed. And then he, he, he um, expounds on it. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna hear more scripture when we get to it. <laughs> He that is born in thy house. This includes his seed. And any other children from the stranger that is born in his house. Specific, his house. There's a house of Abraham. There's a house of Isaac. There's a house of Jacob. There's a house of the twelve sons. And there's a house of Yahusha coming. Where people are going to be born of his house. Reborn of his house. Hebrew or Gentile, free our bond. They, y'all, y'all hearing this? And he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. This is the most high command in us to follow this. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. This is the true house of Abraham. This is the house of the Most High being built and shown to you throughout the generations. From Abraham, Isaac to Jacob and the twelve sons after him. He never changes, but men change, don't they? Men lie. Make, men make the word of truth a lie. Who changed the truth into a lie? It was a man listening to some evil spirit. Powers of darkness, man, speaking lies and deception in their ears, and they believe in it and have faith in it and turn that thing into their deity and an idol. And now men are turning from what is written right here, plain and plain and simple. There, there's no need for interpretation. No need. Let's go to Jubilees. We're just going to back all this up, brothers and sisters. This is Jubilees, chapter 13, verse 13 through 15. Uh, where we at? Right, 13, where you at? What is 13? Start right here. And it came to pass when Pharaoh sees Sarah, the wife of Abram, that Yahweh plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah. Abram's wife and Abraham or Abram was very glorious by reason of possessions in sheep, cattle, donkeys, horses, camels, men, servants, maids, servants, silver and gold exceedingly. And Lot also, his his brother's son was wealthy. So Pharaoh gave Sarah back the wife of Abram and he sent him out of the land of Egypt and he journeyed to the place where he had pitched his tent in at the beginning the, to the place of the altar so just backing it up right here up in uh, Jubilees um, before we go over to the book of Jasher I wanted to uh, scroll down here in Jubilees 13 and show you another part concerning the empowerment of Abraham and his servants over those kings that took Lot captive. Right here, as you can see, it says, And they took captive Lot also, the son of Abram's brother, and all his possessions, and they went to Dan. And one who had escaped came and told Abram that his brother's son had been taken captive. 
and Abram armed his household servants for Abram and for his seed. Now you see now some of this is chopped up, missing scriptures right here, which is talking about uh, a tenth of the first fruits to Yahweh and Yahweh ordained it as an ordinance forever that they should now, obviously this is when he gave Melchizedek a tenth of the fruits after he uh, came back from the battle. But I just wanted to show another witness showing that it was Abram and his household servants that the Most High empowered with strength and might to defeat all these kings. And you're going to see this narrative over and over again of the house of uh, Isaac and Jacob with their servants being empowered with strength, mighty strength, to defeat masses of armies and men together. We've always had Gentiles tied to our house. Now let's go to Jasher. Now, brothers and sisters, this is when Abraham went to the Philistines' land that I was talking about, and Abimelech gave him uh, servants and handmaids starting right here at 24 it says and Abimelech said to them what is this work this is Jasher brothers and sisters chapter 20 24 through 25 and Abimelech said to them what is this work you have been doing and saying you are a brother and sister and I took this woman for a wife he did the same thing Pharaoh did and his house was cursed for Sarah's sake and Abraham said, Because I thought I should suffer death on account of my wife. And Abimelech took flocks, herds, and men servants, and maid servants, and a thousand pieces of silver, and he gave them to Abram, Abraham. And he returned Sarah to him. Y'all see this? This house is steadily grown with who? Philistines. He had Philistines, Egyptians, Syrians, Chaldeans. In his household. And he's going to pass them down. We're going to see later on. He's going to pass all that to Isaac. And uh, we're going to see when we get to Jacob. Uh, who all is going to be a part of his household. And you're going to see him gain even some Canaanites. And uh, later on, of course, when we go on our land. Of course, we got tricked by Gibeon. Y'all going to see when those Canaanites became heroes of wood and drawers of water for us in our land. They've always been a part of our households and they've always been there to take part in the covenant, all these covenants. The covenant made with uh, Abraham, even the covenant with Noah was made with, with Abraham. I mean, Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and every you know, the whole earth, so that he wouldn't flood the whole earth. Then this covenant was made with Abraham with his household. It never, it never did not include a Gentile, and we never had a Gentile in our household. Even uh, we never not had a Gentile in our households, even through the captivities. And we're going to see when they went into the land of Mizraim, all of our servants came with us in the land of Goshen when we had it good and we got tricked into bondage. They were still there when we came out of uh, by the mighty arm of the Most High. They came out with us. But let's stick with Abraham's house. So let's go to um, Deuteronomy. No. Yeah, yeah. Deuteronomy. Let's go there real quickly. Now, I'm going to need y'all to do this for me. This is Deuteronomy 10 and 16. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your mind, your heart. 
and be no more stiff neck. Be no more stiff neck, y'all. This is what got us in trouble all these years, being stiff neck toward the Most High's Holy Word. This is so plain and simple, and it's so easy. There's no need to rebel against this. Circumcise your mind at this time and, and believe the Father. Don't believe me. Believe that what's right there in your face that's being written. Y'all wonder why Paul was talking to him like that. Circumcise your heart. Your flesh will profit you nothing if, if your mind ain't straight. If you believe that the Gentiles wasn't included, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. Because you ain't going to benefit from that if your mind isn't right with the Father. So circumcision of the mind is more important than even the circumcision of the flesh. Not saying that um, circumcision isn't important. It is important. Like Paul continued to say, what profited circumcision? Much every way that we was given the oracles of the Most High, right? Circumcision does profit, but it don't profit if your mind is messed up with doctrine. Let's fix that, bro. That's what we're trying to fix today so you can understand this narrative started with the father first. He did this first. He started building Abraham also before he even made the covenant with him. And then he made it with him. But it included his seed and his household. Now let's go bear witness to Abraham giving everything to uh, Isaac in Book of Jasher, chapter 26. Oh, and I forgot to mention part one and a half is going to be about one law for Yasharal and one law for the stranger. And we're going to cover some vital scriptures that backs up the household of Abraham, household of Isaac, the household of Jacob, household of 12 sons, even when Moses got the covenant, uh, that covenant and the law of such commandments. You're going to read it in the book of the laws. The father following his same blueprint that he started way back then. He, he never changes. Remember that. Now remember, we're, we're proving Abraham's household. And we're going to see Abraham give everything to his son Isaac. This is Jasher 26 and 18. And Isaac and the children of his household dwelt with his father Abraham in the land of Canaan as Yah had commanded them. Who were these children? Jacob and Esau and Ishmael as well because Ishmael was uh, Abraham's. Well, well actually we're going to see them come back from where they was living uh, and they're going to get gifts from Abraham when he uh, passed away and Ishmael the son of Abraham went with his children and all belonged to them and they returned there to the land of Havilah and they dwelt there and all the children of Abraham's concubines went to dwell in the land of the east for Abraham had sent them away from his son and had given them presents and they went away and Abraham gave all that he had to his son Isaac. And he also gave him all his treasures. I see that everything he owned was given to Isaac. That it that did include us, the servants and handmaids. Let's go into the to Genesis and back that up. Right here, Genesis twenty five five through six says. And Abram gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines, which Abram, Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he, let, while he yet lived, 
eastward onto the east country. Y'all hear that? And these are the days of Abraham, the years of Abraham, life, which he lived at a hundred and three score and fifteen years, a hundred and seventy five years. Then Abraham gave up the spirit and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Hallelujah. Now let's just look at the position and place of Eleazar, Abraham, Abraham's number one servant. Right here, Abraham was old. This is Genesis 24 and 1. Old and well stricken in age, and uh, Yahweh had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had. We know that's Eleazar, right? Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by Yahweh, the Elohim of heaven, the Elohim of earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of, of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the, the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. And uh, Abraham entrusted him to find his son a wife. This is the number one servant who was in charge. He put him in charge of his household. So, brothers and sisters, you're going to see this narrative of men and men servants, maid servants being in prominent positions in our households, in our armies. We're going to cover all this. And again, you know, it, it, the witness is just so real all over the book, brothers and sisters. Now, let's tie that in with Hamashiach and his household and his warnings. Matthews 24 and 43. But know this, that if the good man of the house, that's the head of the household, right? The master of the household, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, masters of their household, the 12 sons and their sons after the masters of their household. The good man had known, the good man of the house had known and what watched the thief would come he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. That head of the household is responsible for everyone in there. The wife, the children, any servants, whether free or bond, that's part of his household. Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master have made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him rule over all his goods. Do you see what Hamashiach is talking about? It existed in the household of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Twelve sons. There was a certain understanding we had about this. And we're gaining that understanding back. Hallelujah. But if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My master delayeth his coming, 
and shall begin to smite his fellow servants. Y'all see them, the evil, wicked thoughts? Oh, the, the master's delaying is coming. Let's smite. Let's start smiting these fellow servants. You're going to start smiting your Gentiles, beating them, treating them ill and all messed up. And then you'll begin to eat and drink with, with, with the drunken and you yourself going to be all, you know, just all out of whack. The master of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of. If you follow these laws, such commandments, stay under the new covenant. I mean, under Yahusha and obey the, the laws, such commandments of the new covenant. You won't have to worry about these things. I mean, worry or think. Worry or think about these things. They won't even come to your mind or your heart. Anything that happened to you, will, you will be a good, good brothers, brother and sister to one another. And to even a stranger, as we saw Abraham was. And shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this is what's going to happen to those who are turning on the truth and telling us the Gentiles can't make it. They cannot take part in the covenant. This, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth for them if they don't repent and turn from those sins. They're just not understanding the full narrative. You know, they're babes being taught by babes. And they're being led in ditches. And uh, I'm doing my best to try to help that. Help that. Help my brothers and sisters not fall in that ditch. That narrative was never given to the Gentiles. It was always ours. 25 and 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them was, were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. These are the ones that's just fallen for all manner of wind or doctrine. Not studying themselves approved, to be approved, not taking time building a relationship with the Father and the Son. They're not listening to the Holy Spirit, tell them the things of truth and give them understanding. They're, they're, they're listening to thus saith whoever is deceiving them. These are the foolish virgins that they gave no oil on their lamp they took no oil with them and they're going to run out of oil in their lamp but the wise took oil on their their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him so you want to be ready to meet Hamashiach when he returns then all those virgins arose, or you're going to get purged out. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish and up said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. So don't let no one take your crown. No, let no one take your oil from you. What? doctrines of men and demons but go ye rather he's we're telling them with those who is keeping the oil we're telling them go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready with went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut y'all see that Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Master, Master, open us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And I'm going to leave you right there with part one. Y'all go to part one and a half. We're going to look at one law for Yasharal and the stranger. Which means they are also underneath the covenant that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the 12 sons. See you in the next video.